Child prodigies have long been a source of great fascination. We wonder, how can so much talent reside in such a young body, so much genius? In a moment, you'll meet Jake, a 13-year-old math and science prodigy who's confident he may one day challenge some of the established theories of physics. The source of that talent and that confidence comes from our most remarkable organ, the one we understand least, the brain. What is it about Jake Barnett that had him taking college courses at age eight and getting A's, and by 12, doing paid scientific research? The story will continue in a moment. And today, at age 13, an honors college sophomore lecturing the crowd at his university science symposium. And do any of you guys want my resume at all? The untied shoelaces reveal either your average teenager or the first telltale signs of the absent-minded professor or both. Let's look at these system of points. Surrounded by researchers twice his age, Jake is presenting his summer physics research project on PT symmetric lattice systems. This has implications in fiber optics, electromagnetic signals, anything that requires like a light going through a cable. Got it? Every number or math problem I ever hear, I have permanently remembered. You just never forget. They never, yeah, never slip forget. out the back mm -hmm. door of your brain. No. Is it fun for you to do it? I mean, do you get a mm -hmm. kick out of it? Yeah. For Jake, fun is reciting from memory the infinite series of numbers known as pi. 3.14159265358979323846264338327950 Jake memorized more than 200 of Pi's numbers in an afternoon. And he did it just to test himself. You want me to go backwards from there? Well, sure. 32397985356264338327950 Bravo. <laughs> He's not just parroting a textbook. He understands and analyzes the logic of higher mathematics. He can visualize and solve complex problems by using what he calls the fourth dimension. Just exactly what is the fourth dimension? It's hard to describe in terms of the typical three because it's tangent to all the other ones. I'd be able to describe it if I had like a whiteboard and like 30 minutes to describe it. It takes a while. It's the fourth dimension. What do you expect? The numbers appear to him as shapes that he says just build on one another. So this, for example, is 3 cubed or 27. And then if I want to do 54, I just stack another one onto it. He says his mind is constantly buzzing with new physics problems and theories. When he runs out of wall space, he moves on to windows. Remembering things so precisely, does that ever become a burden to you? No, not at all. No sense of uh, overload? In terms I remember of... math and numbers. I don't remember other things. For example, if someone asks me where something is in the house, I tell them I don't know. The oldest of four kids, Jake lives with his family in the suburbs of Indianapolis. These are my periodic table. It's got all my elements. He used the money he made from his summer research project, $3,200, to turn his bedroom into a science lab. Copernicus was the most recently named element. For as long as he can remember, he's been fascinated by the mysteries of space. Saturn is my favorite planet, not due to the rings, but due to some of its moons. Any ambition to be an astronaut? Um, not an astronaut. Um, that's, like, too dangerous. I'm going to be the guy controlling the astronauts. If anyone's an astronaut, it's going to be my brother. <laughs> <laughs> All work and only occasional play does not make Jake a dull boy. What do you do for fun? When it isn't anything academic? No, I mean, beyond the, the academics. Does looking up space articles online count? <laughs> By a cube divided. He has a full scholarship at the joint Indiana University Purdue campus in Indianapolis, where he is an honor student in math and physics. He may not be the tallest student on campus, but is surely among the brightest. He regularly gets the highest grades in his classes. What happens if you have C sub n, where it's proportional to n? Jake's been auditing classes here since the ripe old age of eight. 
when it became obvious to his parents that third grade was not going to be enough for him. What did your fellow students make of you? Everyone was thinking that mom was taking the class and she couldn't find a babysitter. The students thought I was the student. His parents, Christine and Michael Barnett, expected their son would quietly listen and learn. But even they were shocked when Jake jumped right into scientific discussions. The professor would ask questions and Jake was answering them. And then he took the final at the end and got an A on it. And suddenly the people at the university took notice of that and eventually invited him to attend the university. It's pretty shocking when an eight-year-old aces a university astronomy course. Weren't you impressed? <laughs> I guess I was impressed. <laughs> I was just doing what I like to do. No one could have predicted that Jake would even make it to college. Just before his second birthday, he began to regress, stop speaking and making eye contact. After consulting with several doctors, the diagnosis was autism. We went through speech therapy, physical therapy, developmental therapy, occupational therapy. A therapist came to the home. He was going further and further from our world into a world of his own. And I, I really was just baffled at how we were going to get him back out of that world. And how did you get him back out of that world? We realized that Jacob was not happy unless he was doing something he loved. Which even as a three-year-old was math and science. His parents say the more he focused on the subjects he loved, the more he began to communicate. You could just see him just relax. You could just see him feel like, thank goodness we're not working on something that I can't do today. And how long did it take for him to, as you say, come back? By the time he was kindergarten age, five, six, he was still behind as far as speaking with others and socializing with others. But he was also light years ahead of everybody else. He was coming home asking us, when am I going to learn something at school today? I want to learn algebra. It was trying to keep Jake challenged that led to a kind of double life elementary school by day, and sitting in on college courses in the evening. By fifth grade, he dropped out of public school, and just to demonstrate that he was ready for college, he taught himself all of high school math in just two weeks. He was 10 years old. That was the most determined thing I've ever seen anybody do. He had to sit in a calculus class to prove to the university that he could sit still. And Jacob was like, I'm going to participate in that class discussion. So if I need to learn Algebra 1, Algebra 2, Geometry, Trig, that's what I'm going to do. And he took a stack of books, and he sat down, and he just... Went and taught himself he, all of it in two weeks. Not only that, he finished the entire state of Indiana curriculum for grades 6 to 12 in little over a year. The Barnetts, who've started a center for autistic kids called Jacob's Place, say that many of Jake's symptoms of autism have disappeared. There are certain traits that are still there, um, and if you really, really knew what you were looking for, you could dig them out. But otherwise, you know, that I got a 10-year-old kid at that point in time that just happens to be doing next-level work and no one knew anything different. Your parents told us that you're very proud of your autism. That, I believe, is the reason why I am in college and I am so successful. It is the rise as to my love for math and science and astronomy, and it's the reason why I care. Otherwise, I wouldn't have gotten this far. Joanne Ruth Seth, a psychology professor at Ohio State, has been studying child prodigies for the last 13 years. She believes there's a link between autism and prodigies. We know that child prodigies are having autistic relatives at a very high clip, and some of them have autism themselves. She believes that what sets a prodigy with autism apart from other children with the condition is the prodigy's genes have been modified so that the genius emerges without many of the severe disabilities associated with autism. In the general population of autism, 10% will have an autistic savant skill where they're exceptional at something and they've only got that piece displaying itself. She says for prodigies, be it in math, music, or art, the key to the extraordinary talent is extraordinary memory. They all share this incredible memory, each and every one of them. In Jake's case, he's 
13 years old. Mm -hmm. What's remarkable is not just this memory, but his vocabulary is so adult. Of course they speak like adults. They've picked up so much information along the way so early in their life and continue to do so. She says a talent like Jake's is about one in 10 million. Jake's extraordinary. He's picking up information at a rate that none of us could even imagine doing it. She's tested Jake and says he literally aces every intelligence and memory test. Imagine if everything you saw you could remember, every word you heard, you could recall that, and then you could integrate that information and come up with new ideas. That's what he's doing. Kentucky, New Mexico, a demonstration. Nevada, Dr. Rusat's named 28 Florida, states in random order. Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, no surprise, North he was able Dakota, to do it forwards Washington, and backwards in sequence Missouri, with ease. And when asked again three months later, you still remember them? Yes, yes, I do. In the same order? Mm-hmm. And I can still go backwards. <laughs> and backwards? <laughs> Give me five or ten. Kentucky, New Mexico, Nevada, Florida, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, North Dakota, Washington, Missouri, Texas, Utah, Colorado. While some may dismiss Jake's talent as simply a gift of remarkable memory, his physics professor says the boy is much more than a human calculator. Is it just great memory or something else? It is definitely something else. The great memory does help him, of course, because he, once he reads something, he remembers it. But uh, what is more important is that he has the drive to learn more. He definitely stands out as a powerhouse of raw talent. Professor Yogesh Jogolkar oversaw Jake's research project. Their work was published in Physical Review A. Jake is the youngest person to be published in that prestigious physics journal. The whole randomness thing, that's like completely against all physics. He plans to continue his research, building on Einstein's theory of relativity. His parents say he takes on these challenges with an easy grace. He has his own little tight-knit group of friends that he hangs out with, he studies with, he leads study groups. I have college-aged girls calling the house wanting to know if Jake is available to study during finals. When I go to campus with him, it's like I'm walking around with Elvis. So far, the king seems to keep his celebrity status in check, more or less. Practically everyone knows who I am. Are you a star on this campus? Big man on campus. <laughs> <laughs> I just figured it out. But the little big man says he enjoys nothing more than using his talent to help fellow classmates see the beauty he sees oh. in the numbers. Thanks, Jake. You're welcome. I kind of want to try to use that to end the whole math phobia thing. Because so many people like me and millions of others are scared of math, are scared of science, correct? <laughs> <laughs> why, why is that so funny? <laughs> you can, almost can't understand how anyone could be. Exactly, yeah. Jake is writing a book to help us overcome our fear of math, and he's on track to graduate at age 14, when he hopes to begin his Ph.D. studies. Go to 60minutesovertime.com to learn more about Jake, Groupon, and the proper way to pronounce Qatar. Sponsored by Lipitor.